Hey there, folks. This is floss tube number three. It is August 9th. Uh, in these floss tube videos, I like to talk about cross stitch, painting, and quilting, which are my three main interests. Um, <clears throat> it's been a while since my last video of this type, so let's um let's get into it because it might be long. Uh. We'll go into cross stitch first, and I have a few finishes. I, I finished a page on my haid, and I finished um, finished the horses. Where did I put the horses? Oh, just a second. I have them. <laughs> so uh, I was, I think I was about three quarters away done maybe a little less than that last time I showed you and oops I have it finished this is four white horses I believe it's a Jan Lin Ta -da! I did it on 28 count Two over two. I think this is antique white. Lugana. DMC colors. There's only 12, I think. 12 colors. I am really quite thrilled. I'm not sure how to FFO it, but, you know, that is not really a problem that I'm concerned with. <laughs> it can just sit sit for a while <laughs> but I'm really quite quite happy with it if you want to see the back um, the back looks a lot like the front from this view okay the back not the neatest but not the messiest either good good somewhere in the middle that's not really something that um, worries me much um, <clears throat> I try not to have like big bulging knots and things like that, but you know, as far as neatness is concerned, I'm not too, too worried about it. Alright, now this one, this is my second start of this. The first time I did it was over a decade ago and I did not get very far before I messed up somewhere and I couldn't figure it out where I had gone wrong because I did not have the experience and the know-how on what to do and how to fix it and everything. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick out the second horse that's not f finished and do something with this guy. Don't know what, but that's my idea. And this is on Ada. I believe it's, it's probably a 16 Ada. It doesn't look like a 14. Anyway, those are my horses. I really like how it looks like a, a pencil drawing. And as someone who started out in their artistic journey with pencils, I'm quite happy. <laughs> okay, another finish is I got a page finish on my mini Abilene. I finished page nine right there. Here's what she looks like. I'm over half done. And uh, there are only two, yeah, two more full pages and all the rest are partial pages. And I'm doing her two over one tent stitch on 25 count Ivory Lugana. I don't quote me on that. I don't know what this is. What, what colorway it is. Mini Aveline by Heaven Earth Designs. Original art Cheryl Baker. Very happy. Very happy with the way this is turning out. I think I will be sad when she's finished. But also, you know, ecstatic, but sad. Okay, that's it for finishes, and this was a good crossover to whips because it's still a work in progress. 
Okay, so I started something. I started two things since the last time we spoke. Um, I started this this pattern. This is what it's supposed to look like. It's one of those Russian designers in a Peshkova, I believe is how you say it. Um, I bought this from mybobbin.com. And in English, its title is Wild Rose Blues, if you wanted to search that. This is one of those watercolor looking ones with the, where the back stitch really brings it to life. I'm really, I'm really loving this one. It is fantastic. It is one of those, um, one of those pieces where everything just is so perfect together that it's just a pleasure and a joy and soothing and just just wonderful to stitch. So here we are. So I have a hard time putting this down. So I'm I'm quite far away. Quite far into it. It's on 32 count petal by picture this plus. I'm doing two over two with the called for DMCs. And you can see I have started some back stitching. And it's um, it's really quite enjoyable. The pattern is easy to read. Um, the symbols do not look like other symbols. The the back stitching is a little tough, but I don't have much experience with that at all, so that's probably why. Now the the fabric has a very muted mint and pink modeling to it. Very like I can hardly see it at all. So what I think I'm gonna do to try and bring that out a bit, and, and I don't know if this will work or not, but I'm gonna try, is I'm going to take some muslin and paint it those colors, but in a very intense, strong, um, strongly colored way and then I'm going to put that muslin behind behind this fabric because and you might be able to um, see it and it will bring out those colors I think I think that will work my other new start is it's kind of like a hay but it's not, it's not by Heaven and Earth Designs, but it's a full coverage, um, but it's small. It is Leopard, and but the original artwork is by Pavel Constantine, and I got it from Z Anna Cross Stitch on Etsy. So that's what the, it's very difficult to figure out where I'm going here. There we go. Let's just hold it right there. The, that's what the uh, finished result will be like. And it's only uh, 250 by 175, so that's that's quite doable. Yes, it is. And this is my labeling system, by the way, for the, the each project. I'm doing it on 22 count Hardanger fabric, which uh, was recommended by Caroline of off the grid needle arts and um, she says that's what she uses for full coverage so I wanted to try it out because um, there's just something about um, uh, the, the Lugana that you can, your like your threads can stick fall underneath the fabric threads if you're not careful if you pull it the wrong way and that's not gonna happen with this so I just wanted to try it out this is my start. The pages of this pattern are very small. This is a whole page. And this is three days work. This is the leopard's ear. I'll show you again. It's the leopard's ear right there. That, that space right there. So I'll show you. And I hope if I hold it like this, you can see all those fantastic colors of gray. It's very soothing to work on 
because um, there's not a lot of confetti so far and there's not like super bright colors so far. I don't think there's going to be any super bright colors. Well, that's not true. There are some super bright colors. Let's, let's look at these. Let's look at these colors. Yeah. Um, and then there's a couple more, a couple more like this. That's like practically fluorescent. You know, okay, that's not a bright yellow, but it's not gray either. <clears throat> and there's, you know, that's a nice vibrant color. Yeah. Um, I am really quite in love with all of these colors, actually. Look at this purple. I don't know if that's even coming through or not, but man. Yeah, so I really do like all of these colors. And this green. This green is in there. I've stitched this green already. I don't know if you can tell or not, <laughs> but it's in there. And then this, um, this teal aqua color is beautiful. Where is that? Here we are. This one. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. Okay. <laughs> so I'm enjoying that one. And... So those are my two new starts. That's the two, um... I'll show you my progress on my Herp. This is Mini Herp by Heaven Earth Designs. Uh, original artwork by Sim Suzanne Geisman. I'll show you what it's supposed to look like finished. Isn't he grumpy? I love him so much. So, uh, I'm not going to take this out of the cube snap because I just got it in there in the perfect spot. So, <laughs> you're just going to have to live with it. I finished page one and I am a good three quarters away down page two. And um, right in here is the start of his head. I think I have one more full page and a partial page on this upper upper row of pages, and then that would be it. Um, he doesn't get a lot of love, but um, a lot of attention. I should say he gets lots of love, but he doesn't get much attention because um, it's a very medium project, and I usually want to go one extreme or the other. You know, there's not a lot of confetti, but there is some. And my leopard, there's hardly any so far. And my aveline, there's tons. So it's kind of like a medium. I don't often hit the medium uh, you know, I don't I, you know what I mean. And is that it for cross stitch? It might be. I want to show you my organizer I made. This is my cross stitch organizer. Right now it's got that poppy in it. I keep calling it a poppy. It might be a rose. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I originally designed it to hold half as many floss bobbins. So you'll have to forgive me if some fall out. See, it's meant to hold half as many as that. But there is a pocket here where I keep the pattern and actually the project's in there too. There is a zipper pouch. There's another large pocket, and I can put a hoop in there. And then there is um, two pockets here. Right now, I've got my needle minder on there. Yeah, and nothing, nothing there. But I usually put my scissors in there. And it holds shut with an elastic. Now, this is this was an experiment. If I had it to do it again, I would do many things differently. But it works really well. The front is raw edge applique, and that's really what I had the most fun doing. These were all um, some fabric scraps I had, and I did some thread painting on there to make that lily. And I used um, some heavy, heavy stabilizer. I just wanted to show you that. Okay. I think that's it for cross stitch. And we're only at 15 minutes. How'd that happen? Oh, 
Okay. I can't remember if I told you or not. The uh, Hermph, I'm doing one over one full cross. Aveline, I'm doing two over one tent. And the Leopard, I'm doing one over one full cross. That's, that's that. <laughs> they all have different personalities. I, um... You want to know a secret? I bought another one at the same time as the leopard, and I kitted it up, but I haven't started it yet. I'm not going to start it until I finish one, because I'm not that crazy. But I'll show you what it's supposed to look like. This one is called Handsome, original artwork by Anna Homchik, Chick, Cheek, I don't know. And it's an iris. And it's a big one. It's um, 300 by 400. So I haven't started it yet. I did buy the fabric and most of the floss. Um, there's actually a big pile of floss here that I haven't bobbinated yet. It's just sitting on my desk waiting to go in here. And I think that's it for cross stitch. I might change my mind later, but I think that's it for cross stitch. Um, let's do let's do painting. That's going to be the shorter one. All right. I have a time lapse video of this of me painting this purple flower. I think I call it a purple poppy. Every flower is a poppy, apparently. Well, this I think is actually a poppy, really truly. Um, I got it. I got it. I. How do I say this? I used the book Flowers A to Z. I'm not sure. If you look at the video where I'm painting this, I have it listed in the description. And it's just uh, step by steps on how to paint uh, several different flowers. And this is one of them. I think it might actually be the first one. Okay, and then a totally different type of style of flower. I've got some purple, not purple, yellow <laughs> roses. <laughs> this one I really, really love. Um, it was a warm-up painting, and I could do this every day. It was so fun. And then one that um, I'm really happy with the way it turned out, but was not as much fun because it was hard. Um, a portrait of Jack Elam. He's, um... He was an actor back in the day. I uh, first met him, so to speak, in Support Your Local Sheriff, which is hilarious. That movie, off the wall funny. But he usually plays bad guys in all the other movies that he's in. And um, I find that so wrong because I first met him when he was the lovable character in support your like, local sheriff. And I just, I've always loved his face. It's very interesting. <laughs> and I did not do it justice. And this I used um, watercolor, ink, and colored pencil. And acrylics. Yes, acrylics. So the watercolor turned him into gouache. But, um, there we go. These are all 6x9 on Aqua B paper. And um, the, the roses and the purple flower are watercolor, strictly watercolor. Okay, I know I've painted other things since the last time I made this video, but I honestly can't remember because I, I don't write that sort of thing down. I really should, especially since I write everything else down. Um... Quilting? Let's do quilting. Okay, I finished a quilt top. This one was for my cousin. She comes to stay to my house um, several times a year, and we don't actually have many spare blankets that are nice. <laughs> so she's like, you gotta make me a blanket so I can use it when I'm at your house. And I'm like, sure, why not? So I did, and it's not finished yet, it's just the top but I'm really quite pleased the way it came out. 
So she loves bright colors and this quilt pattern in particular she loves. Okay. This is a big quilt. This is probably the biggest quilt I've ever made. It's huge. I'm not going to be able to hold it on the frame. So this pattern is like a, a double wedding ring, but it's uh, So Kind of Wonderful's version, and they call it Metro Rings. That's So Kind of Wonderful, S-E-W, Kind of Wonderful. They make great patterns and great, great rulers. So for the border, I just um, sort of continued on the pattern, but without additional rings and just finished off those diamonds. And if you can see the concentric circles, they're really cool. Anyway, I'm pretty proud of this one. It's um, it's probably the most involved and the biggest that I've ever done. I like the small quilts. Um, <clears throat> the fabric I used, I will tell you, hang on, for the rings I used Uh, what did I use? Timeless Treasures, is that what it's called? Batiks. And then for the squares here, I used Boundless Solids. You can get those on Craftsy. I don't think Boundless is actually sold other places besides Craftsy. Actually, it's called Blueprint now, isn't it? <clears throat> and then for the yellow and the, the teal here, I actually had those. I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure where they came from. Anyway, I have two art quilts, too. They're only little 8x10 pieces. The first one I did is this. This was from a reference photo from Paint My Photo. If you ever need a, a photo that is... Um, Not copyright free, but royalty free it's for the specific purpose of creating your own works of art with it. Paint My Photo is the place to go. It's paintmyphoto-art.com, I believe. And I did some thread painting in the center there. This is the back looks like this. I just grabbed whatever purple I had. And these here um, are the hangers. You put a, a dowel or a wire across there and it doubles as the label. And then the second one I did is this one. Different techniques completely. Well, not completely. <laughs> Different techniques though. This one, I used a coloring book page, a free coloring book page that you, you know, you can get any of those off online. It's, so, um, I just, that just gave me the map and the shapes that I needed. And I actually hand painted this, the fabric, the colored fabrics in here a long time ago. And I found it recently and I thought, I, I gotta use that. So I just did that. And I did some interesting quilting in the wings. I hope that you can see that and it's not just a black black splotch. I also wanted to show you what I am recently doing to keep track of my quilting because I did not keep track of that at all previously. I need to do it with my painting apparently. This is a three ring binder you can get at any store practically. And I'm going to keep track of my quilts in it with progress uh, photos, some uh, notes, and if I can, swatches of the fabric I used. Let's see some more there. 
and for this one in particular I needed um, these are the instructions and these are the templates so why not keep them all in one spot right and then this one you've I've showed you I think it was the last floss tube this is the smaller metro rings that I did for practice of the bigger one <laughs> and again swatches of the fabrics and progress shots Here's that butterfly that I did for the that ugly fabric challenge and fabric swatches and my design and my ideas, progress pictures. Here's that purple flower. And um, here's the like little template thing that I made for it. And then here's the quilt top I just showed you. It's not finished yet, so I need another page. I'm also doing a block of the month, so I'm going to put in pictures of all the blocks. Here are the extra instructions for that. And I have room for many more. <laughs> so it was lots of fun to put together and it did not take very long at all. I just um, took regular copy paper and I actually printed um, a dot grid on it. I don't know if you can see that at all, but I printed a dot grid on it because I prefer that as opposed to like lines or anything. But if you don't care, use notebook paper. It's fine. If you don't need a line to write on, use regular blank paper. But it it, uh, it didn't take very long to actually put together. It took longer to choose the photos, honestly. It took longer to choose the photos than to put those pages together. And I mean all of them. <laughs> So I mentioned the Ugly Fabric Challenge in there, and I believe it was my last floss tube. It might be my first one. I really, I don't remember what I say in these videos. I really don't. Anyway, Ugly Fabric Challenge. My family and I are doing an Ugly Fabric Challenge. Hold on. Sorry, parched. <clears throat> where one of us picks an ugly fabric, disperses it to the other participants, and we all draw names. And so we have to make something using said ugly fabric for the person that we drew. And the, the goal is to make it so it's not ugly anymore. So I have received my ugly fabric. I was not the person to choose it this time. I was last time but not this time. Uh, behind me you can see two ugly fabric things that I have received. So this is the third time we're doing this this doll here and this, this canvas. So uh, this is the third time. Here is the ugly fabric. It's a batik, so honestly I don't think it's that ugly <laughs> and I love the colors, but there's something about the shapes that do kind of uh, put you off. And I think that's what my aunt, who, who picked this out, was thinking too. So, yeah, it's it's purple and green. And some people love that combination, some people hate it. So she might actually be one that hates it. But I particularly love it. And I know the person that I drew loves it too. <laughs> so it won't be too hard to make something that she'll like. I have a few ideas. But I'm not going to share them right now because um, I'm, I'm keeping it close close to the vest. So hopefully next video I will have it done and I can show it to you. And I had better because it's due in October. <laughs> okay, I think that's it for quilting. I, ha I am doing a commission quilt and I could show you pieces but they're all downstairs in the sewing room so I'm not going to do that if you're really curious check out my Instagram where I haven't posted pictures of it yet uh, I will soon <laughs> you can check out my Instagram anyway it's full of cool stuff at least I think so um, I think that's everything that I have I'm not sure I'm going to say that's everything. 
I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope that you found it helpful. And as always, thanks for watching.